Jalen Hurts is, yeah. I mean, I, unless he has a great year, it's going to be tough for him to to be the guy going forward. But um, I, you know, that's what you're looking at right now. That and um, and you know, if that offensive line is better, they're going to be a decent team. But uh, I still don't think they they win the NFC East. I, you know, and, and if that because I don't see that offensive line staying healthy for the entire year. Football Friday affair here on Birch 365. Johnny Mac, Jody Mac, hanging with you. Oh, we've got one of our faves to hang with us for the next 25, 30 minutes. He hangs with the Philadelphia Eagles all year long, but specifically up close and personal starting Wednesday when everybody gets back to the field. Bob Gross from the Delco Times joins us here on Birch 365. How are you, Robert? Uh, Good morning, Jody and John. How are you guys doing? Doing well, Bob. Good to right. see you. Are you fired up? Are you fired up? What training camp will this be for you? What number? Oh, boy. I'm. You know how I am with math. Um, I guess I could <laughs> figure it out. 19, let's see, 2021 minus 1992 equals no, 29. Bad. Yeah, how about that? The entire, Jeffrey, the entire Jeffrey Lurie era right Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. I think there were – actually, I think there was one missing in there because um, they gave the beat to uh, a non-union paper in the chain. You know, the, the <laughs> union did the best they yeah. could, but they were doing a – it was kind of a – it was sort of a, a lesson to us that if we didn't sign a contract, they were going to start. Oh, yeah. there we go. That just was like, like back, a lesson like by the NFL to get vaccinated. Find that contract. Yeah. yeah, that was like three ownerships ago. So, and and maybe four bankruptcies. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, I think, and that was two thousand three. So, yeah, but it's been a lot of, you know, your question. It's been a lot of training camps, and um, and I, I got to tell you guys, I know people are excited about this, and and they think that there's there's actually battles for starting jobs. Yeah, <laughs> Jody thinks that. that. There's I no, don't know. There's no. There's no. There's no battle. Line. Yeah. There's you're no calling. Battle. You're calling the coach a liar right out of the bat. Yes. I don't know. You ever run the practice? Oh, you're yes, calling him a liar. No. Left tackle. There's a. Battle. What he means Left is, tackle. I hope we find a starter. <laughs> See, this is beautiful. I said, Groats will come on, and he will take the heat off me. Because last time you're on, you said, "What if they start zero and nine? Because people think I'm the negative one. So I'm I'm thrilled to have uh, Bob Groats here, and it is going to be training camp, whatever, 1992. So let's talk about it, Bob. I mean, last couple of days there has been, and Howard was on our show yesterday, and now he's putting Deshaun Watson to the Eagles at 90%. 90%, Bob Groats. It's Jalen Hurts will start there. Can he do anything to be the long-term starter of this team? Is this organization already looking at the next chapter? He's yeah, just I, a placeholder. I, I disagree with that 90% thing. I think there's a lot of unresolved stuff there. I, I you know, he's got his sources, and um, you know, I don't know if he's checked beyond that that particular source, whoever it is, but uh, there's a lot of pieces moving with that. So I I don't believe that. I, I think that the Jalen Hurts is, yeah, I mean, unless he has a great year, it's going to be tough for him to to be the guy going forward. But, um, I, you know, that's what you're looking at right now. That And, um, and you know, if that offensive line is better, they're going to be a decent team. But uh, I still don't think they, they win the NFC East. I, you know, and, and if that – because I don't see that offensive line staying healthy for the entire year. And, uh, th- you know, the depth that they, they – they think they have some depth at, at offensive line. Most of those guys got hurt too. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, so I, I just don't see it. I, I don't share that, that same optimism, but, um, and, uh, and I, I said it, I think on your last show, I still think that Nick Sirianni is, he, he's, you know, wait until he finds out what this is going to be like, you know, um, first, oh, yeah. first head <clears throat> coaching job. This is, this is not going to be easy. And I, I like the idea of an inner squad scrimmage, you know, um, practice, inner squad practice and that type of thing. But two of them in one year, 
to, I, I mean, in, in one preseason that, I mean, that's the veteran guys don't do that. There's, I think there's one other team that that's doing it and, and I don't think they're going anywhere, but I mean, that that's two lost weeks. I mean, for, for the coaching staff, because that, that those things are crazy. I think those intra squad uh, practices, I think the only people that they really benefit are the talent evaluators at final cuts, because then they get to see two teams up close and personal and, and whether they yeah. want to add any of those guys. So maybe that's part of it. But uh, he, it's just – he's got a just a monumental task ahead of him, you know, with that. And uh, and if they uh, – say they do bring in Deshaun Watson and um, and he's told that, you know, we, we want to build a culture around this guy. <laughs> hey, well, could you do any – could you make it any more difficult for a, a rookie head coach, you know, than to have to deal with this stuff? Yeah, and there's no way that they're going to be able to squash this completely, too. If they if they did bring in Watson, I mean, there there are going to be questions. And uh, well, they, so. they, Bob, they did uh, bring Michael Vick in, uh, and and he dealt with everything that. head on. I I don't think and uh, and they had a different head coach, Jody Andy Reid. He was established. They they had an entirely different culture. The locker room. They had a lot of leaders in there, and uh, and they didn't bring him in with uh, after giving up two or three first round picks. He, he was a low risk type of thing. And, uh, and he really, he really worked at it, you know, like that uh, at, at, um, at being, you know, at winning uh, his trying to, back trying to rehabilitate himself. Yeah, yeah. He really, you know, it's like he, 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 uh, I, I, you know, I believe that, uh, and, 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 and there's a uh, Tony Dungy was his mentor. So, I mean, those are those are some pretty ideal things. This um, we haven't even seen anything that's uh, that's happening with uh, so far with um, Deshaun Watson, other than he disputes these all these charges. And there's a lot of them. There, what is it? Twenty two. That, that's 22. a lot. Of, yeah, yeah that, that's a. <laughs> I mean, you can say what you want. All right, there's no criminal investigation, or but uh, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of people. Tony Dungy was a uh, a big help for Michael Vick. Who would be Deshaun Watson's mentor? Is there a well-known masseuse expert out there that that Deshaun could tie it? I just Bob, not, Bob not, not coming up with a name off the top yeah, of my Bob head. Bob Kraft could be. Uh, yeah, 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 Bob, Bob Kraft. Kraft. Yeah. Yeah. He's a perfect yeah. fit yeah. for the Patriots. No, but we got to get him here. Our yeah. Kraft and Laurie friends. Yeah, that's, that's what we need to find out. How close are Kraft and Laurie? Yeah, because you can you can do that. You can be friends as long as you're in different conferences. John schooled me earlier in the show that you got to yeah. get players out of conferences when you trade. You can actually be friends if you're owners as long as you're in separate conferences. So hey, Jeffrey could actually work. Jeffrey Laurie wanted to own, wanted to own the New England Patriots. That's mm. the team he wanted to buy, really, uh, back in the day. And obviously, he's a Boston guy. But all right, let's bring it back to the Eagles. Let's bring it to Nick Sirianni. The first training camp. It's a big job, Bob. We, you've talked to a lot of coaches over the years. What's the one thing they always say? I I, I didn't know how much non-football stuff I've been dealing <laughs> with. Uh, that's constantly. And Zach Ertz is football and non-football. Uh, Zach Ertz is back. He's in the building working out. Uh, he's going to show up for camp because he doesn't want to lose $40,000 a day. But he doesn't want to be here. And, oh, by the way, wink, wink, the Eagles don't want to be here. Why are they putting Nick Sirianni through this? Yeah, well, here we go. I mean, um, and there are going to be questions daily about that. You know, what's going on with Zach? You know, is uh, it'll be interesting to see how many actual snaps he gets and um, and how, how they work him into practice. But uh, – I, I I agree. I don't think um, I don't think a rookie head coach should have to go into the his first season, you know, dealing with something like this. It should have been dealt with long ago. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't know how they're how that the you know if this is building a culture, you know, then um, then the NFL Players Association is doing a great job of protecting their players' rights, you know, in terms of the vaccination and the vaccine and whether to get it or not. I mean, they're, they're just not doing it. I mean, it's just not happening. This, I don't think this is the way you build a culture. I heard Dick Vermeil say the other day, and he's very positive and upbeat. He, he believes the Eagles can have a winning record if the offensive line stays mm. healthy the whole season. But you know, I don't think that's going to – well, I, I mean, I'm skeptical that they will. But he said that for, for a first-year head coach in the NFL – 
uh, the key was to be really uh, to be tough on the guys because you can always be uh, the, the you got to set the tone. You can always be a nice guy later, but uh, you got to show them who's boss and set the tone and, and do that. So, well, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on that. I think that's that's an interesting thing because I think this this camp and I think this whole season is just it's strictly about building a culture for Nick Sirianni and getting the players to buy in. Here's where I'm going to hold Nick Sirianni's feet a little bit to the fire. I I enjoy his competition stances slash rants about everything's open for competition when we know full well Lane Johnson isn't competing for a starting spot, but hey, fine. I get what the coach is attempting to do there. He was pretty outspoken about a good coach will take his players and build his system and his philosophy and his play calling around the players that he has. Not trying to put a round peg in a square hole. Here's my system. We're going to do it my way because this is the way I do things and the players will adapt to the way I want to do. No, he said that a good coach would adapt his system and his play calling to the players that he has. And if that's the case, and Zach Ertz is arguably the third best wide receiver on this team. If you believe Goddard's going to be better, you believe that Sean Watson's going to be better, Ertz could very well be the third best receiver. Well, then you're going to play a lot of 12 personnel because that's what you should do if you're following your own mantra. Don't have to make the players fit the system. Let the system fit the players. If he's coming back and he's here, and I know there's still a very good chance he's traded. Opening week, he's on the roster. I expect the Eagles to play a lot of two tight end sets. Do you? Uh, there's a lot of lot to unpack in that, Jody. Um, <laughs> I, I just – I think there's – we still don't know exactly what that relationship is between Nick Sirianni and his uh, game day roster, his 53-man roster, and and Howie and the, the front office, what their idea is. So I think that'll that'll weigh heavily in that. But uh, – he, he definitely is. A, Zach Ertz definitely is a talent. He he has been a leader. He, he hasn't been like a, a Malcolm Jenkins type of uh, leader, not on that level, but he has he is a leader. And how could you I mean, how could you not want to have somebody like that on your team? But then you go back and after that blow up that, that he had with uh, with Howie. And uh, and I know there's been attempts to say that uh, that was that wasn't about his contract. That was something else. There was a blow up, you know, and it, and it was viewed publicly. So I don't think that uh, and and teams, you know, those trade rumors. I there was too many trade rumors not to think that they don't want to trade them. So I, I don't know how you kind of compartmentalize that whole thing and and set that aside and and just move forward. That, that's if they can do that, that 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 will be incredible. The only controversial figure. The only guy with drama on the Eagles since I covered the team that was able to successfully compartmentalize all the drama and not let it affect his performance on the field was T.O. And we know how that season went, you know, how divisive that turned out to be. The off uh, part, half the locker room wanted him, half the locker room didn't. This is a very young team. And um, and for for Nick Sirianni to, to uh, take hold of it, um, I, I think that uh, everybody – you know, talk about needing to be on the same page. Um, he's got enough headaches and, and uh, for him to even have to worry about this is uh, to me, it, it's just unnecessary. So, but yeah, if he's on the, if he's there and he's one of their players, maybe I don't know how you do it, but maybe he can find a way to kind of rally around this. So uh, they're, they're going to need to, they're, they're going to need to do look for all kinds of, of uh, motivation this season. They may even, they may even cite a, a Philadelphia Eagles.com article, you know, critical of, of a player indirectly and, and use that as fuel, you know, like, yeah. hey, did, did you hear what the website said about us? Yeah. They said that we were 4 11 and 1 last year and uh, whatever, you know. But well, they, they'll use our articles, Bob, yeah. but not Eagles.com articles. There, there's yeah. not going to be any negative there. They're running out of us, though, John. That's <laughs> I mean, true. They're, they're running out of they're, us. That's they're running what, out of us, and uh, and the, that's why the industry has changed a little bit, as you guys know. Yeah. So, and that'll be another interesting thing to look at here too. You know, like um, if there's a if, if I have to use, <laughs> if I have to move my space in the press room, for example, <laughs> and uh, to accommodate someone else, or 
and uh, and, and give up my name tag, you know, because of uh, what I write. I'm, I'm just kidding about that. The, the Eagles, the, the media relations staff has been uh, they they've been uh, really upfront and um, and they haven't been an issue. But uh, yeah, if things are changing. So um, I, I just hope that um, I, I hope that uh, Sirianni and his guys, his staff, um, they, they still need some experience. I, I hope they're just not swallowed up by all the stuff that happens in this preseason. I mean, they're going through this the first time. And I, I mentioned the, the two inner squad things. I still don't, I don't know why you would have two of those. Well, remember, head, there's, there's, a one head less, coach. there's one less preseason game. So you have there a was, little bit. There more were four of an less preseason games last year. Yeah. I mean, it was like, and, and uh, you know me, John, I'd like to go right to the, well, the first quarter of the preseason games, let's go right there, you know, uh, because oh, well, yeah. the, this I'm, training camp stuff, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know how many stories I've written where I've been, I've drank the cold, drunk in the, the Kool-Aid and said, oh, this guy looks good. He looks yeah. great. And then they get in the games and, oh, my. You J.J. Ortega Whiteside. What was He's I an thinking? August star. What He's was I August thinking? August star. Yeah. But um, so what we're, I mean, let's just fast forward to Atlanta, you know. I know yeah. you can't do that, but, you know, let's, that's where we're going to know. I agree with you, and they have the ramp-up period now. So when people were talking about we're going to be on the field Wednesday having grass time, they're not doing anything. It's a ramp-up period. They can't do anything. <laughs> and we're going to be talking, oh, Devontae Smith, what went? But he's got skinny legs. Yeah. Get ready for it, Jody. Yeah. Uh, I do want to steer you back towards the offensive line because you said you're worried about them being healthy, and you should be. I mean, Lane is past 30, Brandon, Jason, Kelsey. But, Bob, I mean, at some point you got to regress to the mean. They had historic attrition last year. It can't be that bad, right? It's got to be better. So I if those guys are out there, Lane and Brandon, Jason, Kelsey, I also give Isaac Sayamalo some credit. He's turned into a – uh, an underrated player, and whoever wins left tackle. If well, those guys at, are out there, that's a good team, Pop. That's a yeah, good offensive line. You're right, but but they've been hurt so often. It, it's not like all of a sudden you stop getting hurt. Once you, you get when you've been hurt a lot, and and then you hit thirty. I, I think it was G. Cobb who said this. You, you just get the you get hurt more. You know you don't get healthy all of a sudden. And uh, look at some of the guys that have last. Uh, some of the offensive linemen who lasted a long time, like look at Whitworth. Has he ever been? Well, he played through an MCL one whole year. Yeah, so uh, he got hurt late. Yeah. And I'm not, believe me, I'm not questioning the the courage of these guys. Uh, Lane Johnson played through an MCL. I'm just saying that the statistically, I mean, I, I, you can, you might be able to have a, a, a relatively healthy season here or there, for, but for all those guys, for, for it to happen with all of them, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I would not, uh, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet the house on that. You know, are we allowed to say that now in this NFL? Yes, you are. And, and awesome. and here's, how, yeah. here's how I'll quantify it. It reminds me of something else that I just dealt with in the last several months. Uh, taking calls from Nets fans because I do national shows and some New York shows too, and I even get a Nets fan every once in a while here in Philly. When Nets fans would say, "Well, when we get the big three healthy, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving." James Harden. When we go, we will be the team to beat. The, the, the Vegas is making us the favorite for a reason. The championship will be ours. And I would say the same thing to him every time. Don't use the word when. Use the word if. If you get the big three healthy, then yes, you could be considered favorite. If the Eagles offensive line stays healthy this year, it's not a when. You can't go when with this group when you've had Lane miss as many games as he did. Brooks miss as many games as he did. It just you're being overly optimistic. You need to take the eagle colored glasses off if you're going to say, well, when we get our offensive line healthy. No, if you get your offensive line healthy, that's the way you have to look at the Perfect eagle's answer. offensive line. Perfect answer. And the big three were never healthy together. No, no. I mean, it just it did not happen. And uh, I'm, we're still waiting on that. That That's an excellent way of putting it. And all those guys, are they're, they're getting up in years. You know, they're not, they're not ancient, but uh, they're getting up there. So... Uh, and by the, oh, by the way, big problem with the depth, they still don't have Landon Dickerson signed. And that's a... <laughs> He's going to be there, Jody. <laughs> He's yeah, going to be there. John gives me a hard time because no. I bring this up all the time. He's gonna, he goes, He's stop it, Jody. He says, stop. He's going to sign. And yeah. I know that's probably the case, but as long as he's not signed, he's not signed, Bob. 
Landon, I'm going to go. You're right about if. Uh, let me chime in, Bob. You're right about if uh, everybody's healthy. And this season's going to be defined. There's too many ifs around this Eagles team all over the place. If Jalen Hurts does this, if Devontae Smith hits the ground running, if the offensive line stays healthy. But I'm going to use when. When Landon Dickerson signs. There's the difference. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding out on that when. It's the, when hasn't happened yet. There have been some Delco sightings of Landon Dickerson. I got to throw that in Whoa, there. Oh, there we go. So he's, healthy. <laughs> he's healthy. He's well, healthy. Healthy enough to be in Delco. Yeah. I was going to say, what are we talking? Wawa? Is he, is he eating well? That's well, Landon eating was, well. Yeah. Landon was doing backflips like a month off ACL surgery. So, you know, they were mad at him because he's so big uh, doing backflips. But I, I, I do want to talk to you. We haven't talked much about the defensive side of the ball, Bob. And, Look, the defensive line is solid. I don't think there's any question about that. But after that, we talk about ifs. The back seven on that defense, what, 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 do they have anything? What, yeah. what, give me some optimism on the back seven of that defense. Well, they got some, it, it, it at least appears they have some athletic guys. They, they've been drafting some guys that can run and, um, and have a lot of enthusiasm. So, you know, maybe that'll, maybe that'll help. Uh, the division that they play in, I don't think anybody, there, there's nobody really, no offense. I mean, I don't, <clears throat> Dak Prescott was really putting up points when he was healthy last year, but I, I think it takes a year <clears throat> for you to get back to a hundred percent when you've had uh a, a serious injury like he's had. I mean, that that fractured leg, I mean, his – or his ankle, it was going the wrong way. I mean, yeah. God, we all remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's not like anybody is is going to – I think they'll still be in games. Uh, and um, with this defense, if they can score some points and, uh, you know, they're healthy early on, I, I think they'll be in games. I don't think they'll be getting blown out. But over 17 games, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. And the defense, yeah, they're looking for – for people just to show up, um, you know, Darius Slay is, well, he's, he's their best def, uh, guy. He's their best secondary guy. Um, after that, I mean, you're just kind of like um, just a lot of uh, pieces, a lot of holes. And uh, you know, we, I, I, I was kidding earlier about, about uh, competitions. They just need somebody to, to show up and take those positions. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't, you know, it'll be fun to see who they, who they try at different, uh, you know, uh, different positions to see if they can fit in there. We'll, we'll get to know something about the coaching staff. And, uh, but, you know, and, and it still strikes me as odd that we know almost nothing about, you know, what, what this coaching staff, you know, how they view things and, and how they view the, these players. And, and I don't know how you can keep trying to hide that. You won't be able to do that through training camp. Right, John, you, you can't, I mean, we're going to know, Seeing is is um, at least believing, you know. Seeing is yeah. part of their thought process, no matter how they try to explain it. We'll we'll at least be get get to to uh, to understand that, and that you know that that I, I forgot now who put the story out there, but um, you know the uh, uh, veterans, you know, having doubts about Nick and and the way that uh, oh, Michael Robinson yeah. was it, Michael Robinson, yeah. yeah. And I I think he's a credible guy. I mean, oh, I, yeah, that, yeah. Mike, I mean, Mike's I, a Former player, he talks yeah. to other players. And by the way, it's just common sense that yeah, how could you not? guys are in that locker room with a first-time head coach. Everybody's not Lane Johnson going. This guy's great. There are guys going. Oh, I don't know about this. I don't know yeah. about. It. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, Bob. Yeah, well, and, and we'll we'll see how Nick Sirianni establishes himself, and um, and we'll see. You know, we'll get an idea of what the the players how they feel about him through this training camp. So. Mm -hmm. I guess that's that's going to be that, – that's an interesting part of, of training camp, although a little bit more subtle than some of the other things. Oh, by the way, uh, Bill Belichick, who might be the greatest coach of all time, doesn't go 90 for 90. There's no. a whole bunch of guys no. that don't like Bill Belichick. So if some of haven't jumped on the <laughs> yeah. Sirianni bandwagon yet, we, we, we'll be okay with that. I, uh, John will like the fact that I – uh, make this point, ask this question, Bob, because he, again, gets to dodge not being the negative guy. <laughs> uh, Derek Barnett, the Eagles have four defensive ends that are probably going to be in the rotation. Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett, Josh Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan. I think Derek Barnett has a real good chance to be the fourth most productive out of those four. 
I think to this year, to this point, his career has been a disappointment <laughs> from where yeah. he was picked in the first round to what expectations were, should have been, and have been underachieved. John likes to say, well, you know, he's not bad. He, he's okay. okay when he's out there. No, that doesn't cut it for me. He's been a disappointment, and I think he will disappoint again this year. And, oh, by the way, expectations have been raised because his salary's been raised. He's on the fifth year of that rookie contract, and all of a sudden you jump up pretty substantially as to how much you're taking down. So Derek Barnett is supposed to, and in my mind, has to step it up this year. I don't see it. Do you? No, I, I, I think he's – He's, he's more than just a guy, but I don't think he's that good either. I think he's a little better than average. And uh, last year, Jody, um, it was, I think, even into the, like the second or third month of the season, he had more career penalties than he had sacks. And and that's always, you know, I mean, that, that's a that, that kind of tells you what, what you got right there. So Jim Schwartz really liked him. And, um, and, uh, you know, how oh, the, that explains why yeah. McMillan like McMillan like him. Schwartz told him he could play. I know yeah. what I saw on tape, but he can't play. You're trying to tell me Schwartz, uh, McMullen likes Schwartz. Yeah, I'd like Jim. Uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'd like Jim a lot. And Jim yeah, did yeah. like Derek Barnett, but I, I will say about Derek Barnett and to Jody's point. Yes. And I acknowledge this expectation wise, because he was the 14th overall pick. Uh, back in the day, yeah, he hasn't lived up to that. But he's a good player. That's all I'm saying. I'm not paying him. So I don't have to sign those checks for 10 million. I don't care what he gets paid. I look at the group and say, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett, Josh Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan, that's a pretty good group. That's a pretty good group. But I understand your your opinion as well, both of you guys. 14th overall pick, you want a star. He's not that. But he's a good player. That's all I'm trying to say. Am I wrong there, Bob? Uh, I don't think that, you know, if you look at the production, I don't know. I don't know that you could make that claim. I mean, well, he's injured you know, a lot. Yeah. I yeah. also say you got to be on the field. That's part yeah. of it. He hasn't and been able to stay on the field. You're right. That's part he's of the whole on the field. He performs at, at a, an above average level. Give me above you, average. You got to be able to that. play. You got to be able to play through those injuries, or you know, they you you just well, know that's him. a fair no, criticism. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair yeah, criticism. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think he's bad, but I I don't I don't get it. I mean, uh, I I kind of I was a little I was just mildly surprised that they they kept him there. If they had had Kerrigan, for example, if they if they had access to Kerrigan before uh, given uh, ex given exercising that fifth year option. I mean, I, that would have been interesting to see what they did with uh, Derek Barnett. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I call him above average. I think he is. I, I, Bob, I like the phrase you use, just a guy. That's what I think Derek Barnett is. He's just a guy. And if you're the 14th pick in the draft, you're supposed to be more than just a guy. All right. Same expectations, not quite 14. Oh, even higher. Taking 10th. Um, Devonta Smith. I asked this yesterday of our guest. Um, Deshaun Watson set the Eagles rookie wide receiver yards uh, number uh, record at 912 yards his rookie season. Uh, I saw a wagering outlet that has the under over for Deshaun for uh, uh, Devonta Smith at 750 yards. Oh, I think that's an easy over. Because I think there's a good chance Devonta Smith's going to rewrite the Eagles' record book and have more than 912 yards. Yeah, I know he's the number one target. Yeah, I know he comes in with a big rep and a Heisman Trophy and other defenses are going to try and make sure he's not the one who beats them. I think this kid is that good that he's got a chance to go for 1,000, which is certainly more than 912. Will, will uh, the number one pick for the Eagles this year – reset their eagle wide receiver rookie rushing record this year yeah that's a that's an interesting line <laughs> i kind of i didn't you know i on paper uh just knowing what i do now and and looking at things um i would say yeah however you know that skinny kind of frame and everything is he going to be dinged up during the year and um and you know we, with that that quarterback uh what if what if joe flacco becomes the quarterback um that he's going over yeah. a thousand yeah, if Joe well, is slinging the ball. Big Joe. 
South Jersey's yeah. own, Bob. Come on. Yeah, yeah. They, he could. He, he tends to take some sacks too, John. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of. I mean, sure. you. The, the potential in this season is. I mean, I mean, and the characters on this team and the the potential for different. Uh, you know, different scripts and uh, yeah. it's just unending. So, um, but I would say I, I would say he goes over. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I. He really, he really looks the part so he far does. Um, does. from what we've seen, and um, and and that un unlike a, a draft picks that I've seen over the years. So this guy really, he really looks the part. So I'd say over. All right, Nick Mullins might be throwing the ball as well. Don't forget that as well, Bob Gretz. But I, I don't. I think he's still getting over that shoulder surgery on his yeah. throwing arm, yeah. right? Okay, I think it was yeah. elbow. I think it was elbow. Elbow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah it wasn't Tommy John? You're right. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> last time you were here, you said it could get ugly, and I believe you threw out 0-9. So my last question to you, it's not going to get that ugly, is it? This yeah, team they, they better, yeah, they better win that opener in Atlanta and uh, <laughs> another rookie head coach because uh, if you – I was as I said earlier, you look at the way their schedule is, I mean, there's there's potential to for this thing to snowball. So um, – uh, it's, um, you know, and I, I still, I still have, um, questions about what Nick Sirianni is going to do. And, uh, you know, maybe that'll, maybe my outlook will change a little bit in the preseason. Maybe it'll even, maybe it'll be worse. Um, maybe they don't, maybe the Eagles don't show anything in the preseason and try to save everything, you know, all the, the real playbook for the, the regular season, like a lot of teams do. But, uh, I, if they don't win that opener, it, it, it could get really ugly. And I, and I, I just, um, you know, with it, with all the, the, the newness to this roster and, um, and all the, the different, um, you know, so the issues that, that we've mentioned, some of them, you know, like they have to identify who's, who's going to play the back end of the defense. It, it's going to be really hard. I, I don't, you know, and even in the NFC East, I mean, you, I don't think you're going to have anybody running away with the NFC for the, with the pennant, but uh, you are going to. I mean, I think all those teams have uh, are, are you know talent wise. I think they're better than the Eagles right now. Bob always looking on the bright side of life. That's why we love you. You you call it the way you see it. My Life's a piece of what if you when you look at it. Yeah, Monty Python. Yeah, <laughs> always look on the bright side of life. Yeah, to do. Do -do 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 -do. Bob, we always appreciate when you come aboard. Thank you, sir. You know, we'd be tapping into you plenty once the season gets here. John yeah, have you. me back in have me back in September. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> September. Maybe, no, you're I don't be, know. We could go an entire August. month. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're I'll gonna know. do. You're gonna do an August spot here, buddy. Right. After McMullen like uh, sideswipes you a couple yeah. times out there on the grass. We're gonna get you right. back on so you can. Take some pot shots. And oh, oh, by the way, all the best to to uh, Harold Carmichael. Let me yes. say that on your show before. I mean, because the the Hall of Fame thing will be over. You know, richly deserved. The the guy has been overlooked for a while. And you yeah. look at his numbers. You you could put, especially in that era when you frame yeah. him. Yeah, really, really incredible. And I think he had. I think he had skinny legs too, but he was six foot seven. So you. Probably gave him cut him a little more slack with those skinny legs rather than the six foot Devonta Smith. Great I point. hope Devonta uh, falls in line. And also someday we're talking about his Hall of Fame status. Uh, great stuff, Bob. Thanks for coming on. We'll uh, get you back on soon enough. All right, guys. Thanks, Bob. Bob. Delco Times here with his son, Birds <clears throat> 365. All right, quickie timeout. Come back. We got to put a bow on this show here on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.